Hey everyone, so you know how the Game Awards has this thing where you can vote for each of their categories and have your voice be heard on who gets each of the awards, whether it actually matters or not? Well, for this year, I actually have some investment with one of the big games that is looking to sweep a lot of the awards, Mr. Elden Ring. You guys know, I quite like this game. I have my issues with it, but overall I quite like it. So I thought, you know what, this would make a... So I thought, you know what, this would make a fun video where I go through each of the categories and give my votes. I've seen a lot of people do this. Uh, and why should I be any different? Now, where I'm probably different is I haven't played quite a few of these games. Obviously, I'm not a full-time YouTuber streamer. I don't have the cash or the time to play every single major game that comes out every single year. But I have seen a lot about all of these games. I've seen full playthroughs of each of them. Some of them I've seen multiple playthroughs of. So yeah, I'm giving my opinions on them regardless. Um, this is going to be biased as hell. Also, again, yes, I haven't played all of these games. Sue me. I mean, like 85% of the internet is just people giving their opinions on shit they know nothing about. So I'm probably no more qualified or less qualified than anyone else in giving my views. I hope to provide at least some logical explanation on each of these. So let's kick it off, starting with the big one, Game of the Year. Um, you probably can gather from that little intro on what I'm going to be voting for, but this, this is actually a fairly solid lineup. I don't particularly have any major issues with any of these games. At least they all work. Uh, certainly in the past we've had games nominated here which were straight up ass slash broken on release and you were looking at this like how the hell did this even get nominated not the case i feel like for this year we've actually had quite a good lineup of games there were no major like real big stinkers that came out <clears throat> cyberpunk you know there was no cyberpunk there was no cyberpunk 2077 this year but obviously i think in terms of considering overall experience overall package and also considering longevity which game people are still going to be replaying two years from now i gotta give it to elden ring i think elden ring again despite the fact that i have some issues with some aspects of the game is by far the best experience that has come out the entire year and again i have a strong suspicion that this is going to be the only game most likely out of all of these, maybe with the exception of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, that is actually going to have any longevity, that people are still going to be talking about and playing four years from now, because like Dark Souls 1 is, I think, 11 years old at this point, and people still play and talk about that game. I think FromSoft games in general have pretty good staying power. Next up, Best Game Direction. This is a weird one. By the way, I haven't mentioned this, but I did go through and check all the categories just so that we don't sit here like an idiot for 10 minutes while I'm deciding on things. Uh, best Game Direction. This one I had to look up what this was, Immortality. And this is like a mobile game with like a Netflix component. I didn't really get what the hell this was. Uh, so... Obviously, I haven't played it. It would be difficult to give my opinion, but best game direction overall, if you consider the actual sentence awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation, I honestly, I have to give it to Stray. Uh, I know it's a standard indie game, but the setting and the cat and everything, I think if we're talking about creative vision, it has to go to Stray because all of these games I know are the fan favorites, but these two, Ragnarok and Horizon Forbidden West, are extremely similar to their previous iterations. And basically the same thing can be said for Elden Ring. It does play on a lot of the Souls slash FromSoft tropes. Next up we have the best narrative. This was the controversial one. People were freaking out that Elden Ring was included in the best narrative category and i actually kind of agree probably not for the reason most people think i think elder ring shouldn't even be in this category just for the simple fact that it basically rehashes every single trope that has existed in the soul series since demon souls from dark souls definitely i mean if you look at dark souls and compare it to elder ring 
you have almost exactly the same tropes throughout the entire game. Even the progression of the game, even though Elden Ring is open world, you still have the big capital city in the halfway point, which has existed in all of the games except for like Sekiro and Bloodborne. So when people say that, oh, Elden Ring doesn't even have a story, it shouldn't even be in this category, that's not entirely true. Elden Ring does have a story. The reason I think it shouldn't be here is because that story is a little bit overplayed by From standards at this point. Honestly, God of War is probably a strong contender. I think God of War is going to win this, but the thing that is really jarring about God of War for me, I've watched multiple playthroughs of this game, is the dialogue for some characters. Like, I've talked about this before, but Kratos and Mimir and Thor and a lot of the characters are completely fine. But then you have characters like Atreus, Odin, Heimdall, who straight up have like fucking Marvel dialogue. And it's really weird and jarring because the previous God of War certainly didn't have that. And it's just, it knocks you out of the experience so much. Even though this game's world and story are really immersive, the dialogue choices and the way they speak, it's like so Americanized and Marvel-like that <clears throat> it completely knocks you out of a very strong setting and experience. So... Just because of that and considering all of these other games, I think I gotta give it to Plague Tale Requiem. I like the first Plague Tale. I have played it multiple times. I really, really enjoy Plague Tale. And the sequel is great as well. I'm definitely, it's definitely on my list to pick up. And from what I've seen, this is, this is a very solid game. All right, best art direction. This is going to be a very, very easy pick for me because it's gotta go to Scorn. The only reason is, I know Scorn has a lot of issues, I've seen the game, I see the issues, but it finally does something different. Like, you look at all of these games, outside of Stray, Stray is the other one that does um, kind of something different, but Scorn really goes out there, and if we're looking at games as art pieces and actually consider best art direction, Scorn definitely wins it because it captures the H.R. Geiger look so well that, yeah, it, it, has, it has to be Scorn. And don't worry about some of these. I know we're like four in out of 31 categories. This is going to be speeding up. Don't worry. Next up, we have best score and music. Now, I completely agree with Moist Critical here. It is absolutely criminal that Sonic Frontiers wasn't included. Sonic Frontiers has an absolute banger of a soundtrack, no matter what you think about the actual game itself. Even though I kind of like the game as well, I don't think it's a game of the year contender in any of the categories, but the soundtrack, the soundtrack should be given respect because it is a banger. So just consider the fact that if Sonic Frontiers was here, Sonic Frontiers would get it from my view, but a lot of these other games, I had to look up this one too, because I haven't heard of it. Uh, I listened to the soundtracks for all of these. I have to give it to Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, JRPGs always have stellar soundtracks and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is no different. All right, best audio design. Uh, again, it's a weird one that Elden Ring is included here because I don't think this game particularly has great audio design or it's not as good as to be sort of a highlight compared to other FromSoft games. Yeah, M Modern Warfare probably is a valid choice, but I have to give it to Gran Turismo 7. Uh, you guys probably don't know, I am a bit of a secret uh, racing game fan. And I enjoy all of the Gran Turismo games, and they all have fantastic sound design for all of their cars. Really immersive, really good. Yeah, I, I have to give it to Gran Turismo 7. Best performance. Listen, yeah, we're going with the voice acting slash motion and our performance capture, which is great that we're now at a point uh, with gaming where this can be a thing. We've come this far that this is actually recognized. This one is an easy pick. It's Christopher Judge. Um, say what you will about God of War. You can love it. You can hate it. Uh, this guy is so fucking good as Kratos. So good with the motion capture. So good with the voice acting. It is the easiest pick ever. 
Games for Impact, I had to look this up as well. Uh, these are basically games that have like, a, well, as it says here, thought provoking message. I have not played a single one of these games, but I've looked into them. And honestly, this one seems pretty solid as Dusk Falls. It has a really intriguing concept, at least that would make me want to check it out. Some of these other ones are like box standard indie games. And even this is like kind of that, but you know, it has a very interesting premise at least. Best Ongoing, awarded to game for outstanding development of ongoing content. Now, yeah, makes sense. I can't say I'm a huge fan or a big like enjoyer of any of these games, but the like basically the only one I've put significant time into is Fortnite years ago. I haven't played Fortnite in years. I think overall it has to be Final Fantasy XIV. I've seen Final Fantasy XIV, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's one of those games where I'm like a little bit afraid to jump into it and try it because it w is definitely one of those games where I know I would get addicted. Um, and yeah, yeah, who wants to be addicted to Final Fantasy XIV? Anyways, best indie game. I know I've voted for Stray before, and I do like the concept of Stray, but... Sifu. Sifu is fantastic. I've played Sifu. I really enjoy Sifu. Um, I think it's fairly underrated. Really, really good combat game. And yeah, it's easy pick for me. Easy, easy pick. Best mobile game. I don't play mobile games at all. So I don't really know. I don't really know who to give this to. Uh, Marvel Snap is the card game. Diablo Immortal definitely doesn't get it. I know the, all the controversy around this game. Uh, let's give it to... Fuck it, let's go Marvel Snap. I've enjoyed Hearthstone and Marvel Snap is similar. Again, as I said at the start, if you, any, if you expect any sort of um, logic or objectivity here it's not gonna be it's not gonna be here best community support Re recognizing game for outstanding community support transparency and responsiveness this one as soon as i saw it i knew my pick it's no man's sky no man's sky has changed so much changed so much for the better it's kind of crazy and i don't think any game has risen from the depths of awfulness quite as much as No Man's Sky. And now I feel like the devs really are very good at community support and listen to the people and do take a lot of the player feedback into account with patches and adding new content and everything. And No Man's Sky is a really good game now. I actually really love No Man's Sky. Innovation in accessibility. Um, well, since I don't use or need any of these features, um, I've seen them, I've seen how they work, and I guess we can give it to God of War Ragnarok. Um, Last of Us is a really good one. Last of Us was really the pioneer in this, but yeah, God of War is good, I know as well. Yeah, I don't play VR either. I'm, I'm not a big VR gaming guy. Even though I do have the PlayStation VR, uh, I still think VR is just difficult to sort of implement into your daily just gaming it's such a hassle to set up a lot of the times you need to be in a specific spot with things it's just a hassle when most of the times the way i game is either here on youtube when i stream or something or when i just want to crash on the couch and play some games and you know vr kind of clashes with that uh so i don't know i've seen bone lab gameplay of bone lab and we'll give it to bone lab why not Best action game, another easy one, it's Sifu. Sifu is by far the best action game that has come out. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one is good as well, but that's essentially a remake of an older game. Bayonetta 3 has good gameplay, but as many of the reviews and everything and people in general have pointed out, it's just, it's now so chaotic that sometimes you can completely lost in the action and Sifu is basically the exact opposite you are so like in the action and everything just works it's so responsive and the combat is so good so much to improve on it's kind of crazy Sifu for sure best action adventure um 
combining action, adventure, puzzle solving, traversal, yeah, etc., etc. I don't know. I know I've given all of these games, like, well, not all of them, but I've given some of them votes. Um, it's probably a toss-up between these two. Uh, I really like Plague in general, but I think we have to recognize God of War. If we look at just the action-adventure trope, God of War is really good, even though I do think the combat and the traversal in particular the platforming is not the deepest uh, it's not particularly deep in Plague Tale either best role-playing game you guys know I can't believe Pokemon Legends is here although this is the older one right I have no idea what this was live a live I didn't know Square released an RPG this year um, and this one as well God, Square makes a lot of RPGs and you don't even know about it but Easiest pick, you guys know. Best fighting. This one, when I saw it, is actually crazy how many like shitty games are here. Like this one, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And Sifu, I like it, but it's not really considered a fighting game, which is a bit sad that uh, not even five fighting games were released in 2022. Next year is probably going to be better because we have Street Fighter VI coming out. Um, you guys know I'm a fighting game fan. King of Fighters, I've never really gotten into. It's just so complex. It's a little bit like Tekken in that it's a little bit its own world. And you need to be specialized in King of Fighters. Uh, Multiverses, I have tried and I enjoy quite a bit. DNF Duels, I don't own, but I've played. And I feel like this is a box standard Arc System Works uh, game. And I think people have gotten bored of it fairly quickly, even though it was hype when it came out. Yeah, we have to give this to Multiverses. Best Family. Um, a lot of these games are actually very good. And for me, this would be a toss up between Lego Star Wars because I am a Lego Star Wars enjoyer and Splatoon 3 because Splatoon 3 is genuinely a fantastic game. And I think it has to go to that. Uh, all of the Splatoon series is excellent. Strategy, again, kind of a dry category. I'm a huge RTS game fan, and it's not a genre that gets a lot of releases. However, as a former and even partially current Warhammer nerd, I do have to give this to Total War Warhammer. Uh, I have played the older games, haven't played three, but any Warhammer and Total War RTS slash Warhammer RTS game is always going to get some love for me. Sports games, outside of racing, I'm not a huge sports game fan, so obviously this is going to go to Gran Turismo. Best multiplayer, uh, this one, yeah, just considering the previous sort of thoughts and everything, Splatoon 3 is really good, like genuinely really good on the multiplayer front. Content creator of the year is a weird one, because outside of Ludwig, I've not heard about any of these people, I have no idea who these people are, so... It's got to go to Ludwig because I've actually seen his content and do watch his videos. Debut Indie. Um, there was a lot of good ones here. And I almost thought about giving it to Vampire Survivors. But I think in terms of just the vision, it's got to go to Stray because that is a genuinely good indie game that is debuted. It's kind of crazy to think that that's a sort of debut all right, best adaptation. The fact that this is here is criminal. I mean, this movie is god awful. I mean, god awful. Like, it's the trashest movie. Sonic, good movie. I do enjoy the Cuphead show just for the animation. Uh, but I think I gotta give it to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Cyberpunk Edge Runners was such a surprise and. Arcane, this is still on my back burner. I know this is really good. I've heard about Arcane. I know it's really good. The animation is fantastic. Uh, but Cyberpunk, I've actually seen, so we gotta give it to that. Most anticipated game uh, Final Fantasy 16, Hogwarts Legacy. This game has so much controversy around it, and I'm still kind of hyped for it. It looks good. I'm gonna go to Hogwarts Legacy. Resident Evil 4, I think it's. 
I know it's anticipated and I hype for, and I'm kind of hyped for Resident Evil 4 as well, but the fact is, can you really give a hype award or anticipated award for a game that has already been out and has been featured on a shit ton of consoles? I'm not 100% sure. Esports game, honestly, it's kind of criminal that there is not a single fighting game on here. Uh, Rocket League is the only one I watch occasionally, so we'll, we'll go for Rocket League here. Best esports athlete, again, the only esports I watch regularly is fighting games, and none of these people are fighting game players, so I have zero clue who to give it to. Um, CSGO is probably my second favorite. It would be my second pick after Rocket League because... Yeah, I'm Eastern European, of course I like CSGO, like, what do you think? And the same here, uh, we gotta give it to CSGO Face Clan, just for the fact that it's CSGO. Esports coach, why is this a category? Holy shit. Um, I mean, I get it, probably people know who all of these people are. I don't. Best esports event. Uh, gotta give it to my man, EVO2022. He was back with a bang and it was very enjoyable. Actual fighting games were featured there. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I gotta go for it. Is that it? That's it. Genuinely. Cool. Well, that was, again, biased as hell. I tried to at least give some reasoning behind my choices. I do think there are some glaring omissions, but who cares? I mean, you look at the Oscars. Um, a lot of great movies get snubbed. Actually, this one, probably in terms of picks, uh, this was not the most egregious vote or sort of like game choices for these categories. The only thing I was really missing is Sonic Frontiers in the soundtrack department because that game has such a good soundtrack. And probably I'm going to go play some Sonic Frontiers. Anyways, I'll wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed this little video, do give this a like, comment, subscribe. As all usual, turn on post notifications. It's Friday today. I'll be starting a new streaming series. Tomorrow, gonna be jumping back into Dark Souls 3. Elden Ring, I'm hoping will clear the board. I know God of War Ragnarok is probably gonna beat out everyone because that game is basically Oscar bait in game form at this point. But I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sad if Elden Ring was recognized because again, as much as I have some issues with the game, you get to recognize how fantastic it is and how big of an impact it had on gaming this year. So yeah, just because of that, Elden Ring for the win. I'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. See you next time. Peace out and goodbye.